dear students this is our ninth lecture on medicinal chemistry and third lecture on cardiovascular drugs and in today's lecture uh, we will discuss uh, what are vasopressor drugs uh, as you know uh, the cardiovascular drugs uh, they have been classified into these four types cardiac glycosides antihypertensive and hypotensive drugs antiarrhythmic agents and vasopressor drugs uh, these three uh, category of uh, cardiovascular drugs we have already discussed uh, in the first two lectures in the first lecture uh, we have discussed about uh, cardiac glycosides as well as antihypertensive drugs whereas in the second uh, uh, lecture on cardiovascular drugs we have discussed about antiarrhythmic drugs and uh, the link is given for uh, both these lectures separately and if you want to discuss about these uh, drugs then uh, you can visit uh, YouTube uh, with this link to have uh, uh, these lectures now this lecture is uh, about vasopressor drugs uh, vasopressor agent or these are also known as antihypotensive agents or simply vasopressors or pressors uh, these are uh, can be defined as uh, any compound that tends to raise uh, low blood pressure uh, in any patient uh, that would be known as vasopressor agents and these uh, compounds may be exogenous or endogenous the uh, vasopressor drugs they act as vasoconstrictors to increase total peripheral uh, resistance in the body then to sensitize uh, adrenal receptors to catecholamines uh, like uh, these are the vasopressor agents uh, glucocorticoids which you know uh, are steroidal derivatives uh, they can be used as uh, vasoconstrictors similarly uh, this may increase the cardiac output also uh, when we will use vasopressor drugs and most commonly used uh, vasoconstrictor of these this category they are dopamine uh, having this type of structure and dobutamines having these types of chemical structures so these are the most commonly used vasopressor drugs uh, which can uh, which can be used to raise the low blood pressure in a patient to normalize its blood pressure. And the uh, low blood pressure in any patient may be due to blood loss. Then uh, if it is due to blood loss, then uh, we can use preparations which can increase volume of blood circulation like uh, plasma substituting solutions such as colloids or crystalloid solutions. They can be used to increase the blood pressure. Uh, and then uh, there is no uh, uh, direct vasopressor activity which is required for such type of patients. Uh, the common type of uh, drugs or vasopressor agents which are used are these types of uh, organic compounds and uh, these are also known as adrener uh, adrenergic drugs or adrenergic amines. Uh, these are stimulant compounds which mimic the effect of endogenous agnosts of uh, sympathetic nervous system and these uh, uh, sympathomimetic effects uh, they will include the increase in heart rate this will also force uh, of the cardiac uh, contraction and this will also uh, increase the blood pressure in the patient thereby making the blood pressure uh, to a normal level the primary endogenous uh, agnos of the sympathetic nervous systems are the catecholamines uh, like epinephrine having this type of structure this is also known as adrenaline uh, similarly nor epinephrine like uh, noradrenaline 
uh, the having this type of structure they can also be used as vasopressor agents then uh, as i have already told you dop dopamine uh, is another commonly used uh, vasopressor agents uh, then uh, metraminol uh, having uh, this type of optically active compound being used as a vasopressor agents and uh, these uh, non epi uh, nephrine type compounds they uh, function both as neurotransmitters as well as hormones so uh, they have multifunction uh, they can be used for multifunctions in uh, different types of diseases then these are the other types of uh, vasopressor agents which can be used uh, to raise the blood pressure in any patient uh, this is uh, the literature used for preparing this lecture. Thank you very much.